All right. Hey, I, I can't wait to talk to Dr. Jason Johnson about this uh, because this Supreme Court, these Supreme Court hearings, they are that in name only. The first black woman in history nominated uh, for the Supreme Court. So in, in theory, uh, Dr. Jason Johnson, we're talking about the Supreme Court. In actuality, I'm guessing you're going to tell us that we're talking about presidential runs. We're talking about <laughs> firing up, firing up my base. See what I said? Did you see what I said there? Uh, you, you, you see, I got him. Hey, I'm see? not going to let critical race theory. I'm not going to let them do that to you. See, I'm your guy. It, it, this is really not about the court at all, is it? No, no, it's, it's not, Michael. What, what this boils down to is a big performance, right? This is the Pro Bowl. It doesn't really change anything. You're already in, right? The votes have already been cast. This is just the performance <laughs> part. She, Ketanji Brown Jackson, is going to end up on the Supreme Court. Everything that's being done now is a performance so that Josh Hawley or Ted Cruz or Lindsey Graham can raise money and have their clips go viral on right-wing websites, be discussed by Joe Rogan, or end up on Tucker Carlson. That is literally all this is. And, and, and frankly, and I know we're going to get to this, but I say this in a, in a grander scheme of things, it also, as important as it is historically that Judge Brown Jackson is eventually going to get on the court, we also have to remember that even the critical issues they're talking about, issues like transgender rights, which they're mentioning in bad faith, issues like public education that some of these uh, Republican members are mentioning in bad faith, she is only going to be the third sort of progressive liberal judge on a court that still has six right-wing conservatives. So she doesn't change anything. She's not going to change how any room. She is Tyree Kill to the dolphin. It changes nothing. Nothing, okay? It looks <laughs> like, look like a big deal, but it ain't going to change the end result. You're still going to have a lot of rulings that are 6-3 even after she's on the court. Ooh, I, 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 I like that Tyree Kill uh, take. We'll get we'll get to there. We'll get to that <laughs> because I actually agree. I actually agree with that. But uh, you tell me this, and we just showed the headline. I, I said earlier, uh, I've been a man for 52 years, 52. And if somebody says to me, can you define man? I like why 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 do I have to? <laughs> right. <laughs> what? You put that on me? Right. I got to right. define that. What was that all about? Well, it was it was it was about uh, uh, Senator Mashburn, uh, Blackburn. Sorry, uh, Martha Blackburn. It was about the senator trying to make the Supreme Court the ultimate arbiter of these hot button social issues that really don't matter to many people. And I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned this, Michael, because I think this is really important. When we're talking about the issue of trans identity and trans rights, okay, it is not an issue that really the Supreme Court is dealing with much at this particular point. It's actually primarily being dealt with at the state level. It's being dealt with uh, with, with Leah Hill and swimming. It's being dealt with by local high schools and local governors and everything else like that. It really isn't even an issue that Ketanji Brown Jackson would deal with. And if it does, if the rights of individuals who are trans eventually comes to the Supreme Court, it ain't gonna be up to her to determine who's a man or a woman. That's actually a legal biomedical ethics question. All she's going to be deciding is do these individuals have the right to live their lives in peace and pursue the American dream like everybody else? And I'm guessing that is going to be the case because regardless of your sexual identity, regardless of your gender identity, regardless if you're double X, Y, triple X, Y, up, down, left, left, right, whatever your identity happens to be, you have a right to live in this country peacefully. And I think that's not, that, that ultimately shows why these questions are bad faith because it's not about a ruling she's eventually going to make. It's about reminding people who live with bigotry and hatred in their hearts that you will still attack these people regardless of the circumstances. Uh, so I, I like what you said. Look, she's definitely going to be uh, the, the nominated to the Supreme Court. She's been nominated to the Supreme Court. She's going to make it. She's going to be confirmed. Uh, what does that mean? One, just the, what's the significance in your mind? We've, we've had Thurgood Marshall, significant. Clarence Thomas, no matter how you feel, <laughs> significant. Now, Ketanji Brown Jackson, what's the significance uh, when she is officially confirmed? I mean, it's significant that, that you have an African-American woman on the bench, only the third black person on the bench, and in and, and the, 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 not even the grand philosophical scheme of things. If you think about the Supreme Court, 
which has been, you know, 91% white men throughout its entire existence. That means that at no point, at no point in the entire history of this court, in the entire history of this country, have black women had any voice. And yet they were subjected to the rulings of this court. You talk yeah. about, uh, you know, taxation without representation. It, think about this from the philosophical standpoint that, that black people were subjected to the laws of the Supreme Court for, you know, almost 200 years, over 200 years before the first black person got to say, well, maybe this is a black perspective. And now it is, you know, over 230 years and we're finally getting an African-American woman on the court to discuss and, and bring forth what might be her perspective as a black woman. So it is significant because it shows the, the lack of representation, the lack of effectiveness on many levels of the Supreme Court up to this point. How on earth, you, you know, Michael, if you and I end up going to court, right? You know, there's, there's this argument, it's like, hey, we should, if it's a jury trial, we should have a jury of our peers. Right. Well, the Supreme Court has never been reflective of the men and women whose laws they determine the constitutionality of. So this is very, very, very important. Will she make that much of a difference again? She's three out of six. I mean, she's three out of nine, one, one out of nine. But symbolically, yes, it's a turn in the right direction. See, I'm trying to make a, uh, I'm trying to make a turn from the Supreme Court to Baker Mayfield. And the only thing I can come up with <laughs> Baker Mayfield in Seattle. And maybe that is that be the, the one thing that the court would unanimously agree that that's a bad idea for the Seattle Seahawks. Do you agree? Do you agree that <laughs> Baker to Seattle? Uh, that's not what you want for your former team, current team. I'm not sure where you stand with the Seahawks these days. So, so again, I'm still the Ronin, as I told you. I'm still the I am still the Ronin when it comes to football. Although I will argue this, I will argue this that my alma mater, University of Virginia's colors are blue and orange. My current institution, Morgan State's colors, are blue and orange. So if I lean to the Broncos, I already got clothes for them. If, if Russell takes me to the yeah. Broncos, I am already stylistically prepared. Here's the issue that I see right now with the Seattle Seahawks. You know, Drew Locke is not Russell Wilson. Drew Locke is not Matt Hasselbeck. Drew Locke isn't even Matt Flint. And so if bringing in Baker Mayfield gives you an opportunity to at least have a competition to, to find out if the Seahawks are going to go six and 10 or five and 12, I say bring in Baker Mayfield. I think that Baker Mayfield actually is, when he is healthy, he is an adequate quarterback. And at the end of the day, since it appears that everybody there in Seattle is not interested in keeping their job, and by that I mean Schneider, and by that I mean Pete Carroll, what difference does it make what quarterback you get? Because you're going to be losing in that division for the next three to four years until trustee owner Jody Allen says it's time to go. But I will say this, Michael. I want to add this as we're talking about Browns quarterbacks and former Browns quarterbacks. I appreciate what you said about Deshaun Watson last week. I think that the Browns have signed up for a quarterback in Deshaun Watson that is not only going to blow up in their faces from a points-on-the-board standpoint, but I think from an ethical and a moral and a branding perspective, I think that bringing in Deshaun Watson was a mistake. You may be done with Baker Mayfield. You may be back in the quarterback carousel. But to bring in someone who has 22 accusations of sexual mm. misconduct and say that that is going to be the leader of your billion-dollar franchise, that he is going to be the leader in the locker room, that he is going to be able to handle after a terrible loss to the Ravens, being pounded with questions about this issue because this isn't just going to be this season. People are going to ask him about this until the end of his career. You have put a That's tremendous right. amount of faith in a man whose behavior hasn't demonstrated that he will be up to that pressure on the field or off. Yeah, and uh, and how about that? Also, the fully guaranteed two hundred and thirty million dollar contract. Now, I happen to think that contracts should be guaranteed in the NFL anyway what they go through, but nobody has done this. They've never had a 200 plus million dollar guaranteed contract in the history of the league. I want to ask you this before we uh, get you out of here, though, and I appreciate you saying that about uh, 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 our Deshaun Watson conversation. It was a, it was a brotherly, passionate, but loving it was conversation real. that it we was had. Real. It yeah. was real. I, I, yeah, it was, it was real. real. I got and a lot you know of people that. in 
Cleveland, and I sent that clip. I was sharing that clip. Through. I was, I was literally, I will tell you this. I was on vacation. I was out of the country and was, was watching that clip and was texting it to people because because that's real. Your, your quarterbacks, and, and, and I'll say this because I don't think this is important. When I look at it, it's a, again, my favorite guy, Russell Wilson, heading to the, to, to the Broncos. One of the things that we also have to remember is that NFL athletes and certainly quarterbacks, they are role models. We're way past the Charles Barkley. You are a role model thing. It matters that you present not only an image of somebody who is professional and responsible, but somebody who is ethical. And I think that oftentimes, I will say this, there's only one good thing I can say about what happened with Deshaun Watson, but it also relates to Russell Wilson. There are only seven athletes in the NFL, out of several thousand players, only seven athletes in the NFL had no trade clause. The only two quarterbacks with no trade clauses both happen to be African-American. Let's point out that the deal that Russell Wilson was able to get for himself to go to a team that he can still win with, the deal for Deshaun Watson to get so much money guaranteed is indicative of African-American athletes showing a lot more agency than most sports analysts, certainly not sports analysts, sports analysts who aren't of color, are willing to acknowledge. Both of these men mm. demonstrated that they can take a lot more control over their careers than anyone has ever seen in the past, and that is a sea change for what is happening in the NFL right now. That's a great point. Last question for you. Tell me why Tyree killed in Miami. It's not going to change anything. So I, I, I happen to agree with that, but I just want to hear your take on it. <laughs> Look, I, this is really simple. This is really simple. It's like I said with Tanya Brown Jackson. She's brilliant. She's amazing. She is still only going to be one justice on nine. I don't care how good Tyree Hill is. You're still catching balls from Tua. You're still catching balls from a rookie coach who, by the way, we don't even know if this guy is that good because the Miami Dolphins players were literally in tears when Brian Flores was taken away. I don't think Miami is heading towards a positive future. I don't think their new coach is necessarily going to do very well. And I think if I'm Tyreek Hill, all I can think to myself is I'm going to spend one season trying to catch ducks out of the sky from Tua. Then next year, they're going to give me another rookie. <laughs> and then year number three, I'm going to try and keep myself healthy from being hurt. All he has done is demonstrate that he's going to waste the next two or three years of his career in a losing division where he's not going to be that successful. This is Randy Moss to the Raiders, but worse. Mm. I think Tyreek Hill Ooh. is going to regret allowing himself to go to this particular space. And I think that the Kansas City Chiefs have opened up the AFC West to either the Chargers or the Broncos, because I don't know that I believe that Patrick Mahomes will be able to throw the kind of bombs he does, throw as quickly as he does, if it's only Travis Kelsey getting bracketed, because he ain't got and nobody to stretch. that's where we disagree. And that <laughs> is where we disagree, because I think Kansas City is going to be fine. But Doc Johnson, it's always a pleasure to hear you, brother. Uh, thanks, for, uh, <laughs> thanks for blessing us. Thanks for educating us on a variety of topics. I can't wait to see if you're right, though, about Kansas City. And Kansas oh, oh I right. would be right. Unless they take DK Metcalf from Seattle, they're in trouble. <laughs> Ooh, good idea. Let's get that trending. <laughs> thanks, man. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.